Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science and we've been receiving a lot of emails from companies out there that have been relying on free from claims as part of their major marketing campaigns and of course with the latest EU guidelines on not being allowed to use free from claims anymore they're panicking on what do we do to help make sure we have a strong point of difference. So this video is gonna give you some great ideas for you to move forward, especially for the smaller and indie brands that may have been relying on those free from messages. Now, if you're in the EU, and the EU is the biggest cosmetics market in the world, you would by now be aware of these free from guidelines, which mean you can no longer say that products are free from parabens and pegs and SLS and etc. and those sorts of claims. If you haven't already been made aware of this, please watch our video. Now, if you're in another country around the world, you might be thinking, well, this doesn't really apply to me, does it? Well, the technical guidelines document that is now in force in EU can be used by courts around the world to determine if a claim is misleading and deceptive. Now, just remember that cosmetic ingredients are considered safe by regulatory authorities when used within the limits set. So a lot of this misinformation on the internet about so-called danger from certain cosmetic ingredients simply isn't true. Therefore, if you're suggesting that your product is superior because it doesn't contain other perfectly allowed and acceptable cosmetic ingredients, you're being misleading to your consumer. It means that brands around the world are going to have to conform to the EU technical guidelines, whether they're in EU or not because the overarching marketing principle of all consumer goods is that they must be represented to the consumer in a truthful way and not mislead the average consumer. So suggesting that SLS and parabens and pegs and other ingredients that are perfectly suitable and allowed to be used in cosmetic products aren't safe simply isn't acceptable anymore. So what are you gonna do? Well, as an indie brand, there's a few things that you really need to make sure you have in your product. And then I've got some great suggestions to help you redevelop existing products, remarket existing products, and think about concepts that you might wanna develop in the future. First of all, if you're an indie brand, let's look at some of the things your products should be marketing and should contain. Your product should have a sustainability or eco-conscious message. Consumers are looking for this now, so your products should have some sort of socially responsible, eco-responsible or sustainability-based message. You don't have to focus on this, but you should have this in the background as one of your company philosophies. Your product should include some natural content. Now that doesn't mean your product has to be natural. Again, there's a big misconception out there that natural is safe and that's not necessarily true. And that synthetic is harmful. And again, that's not necessarily true. But consumers and the increasing trend over recent years has definitely strengthened the natural's position in the market. So even if your product contains a lot of synthetic materials, it would benefit your brand to have at least a small natural content and point this out to your consumer. Now it would be misleading to suggest that your product is natural to a consumer if there is only a small natural content, and that's not what I'm suggesting. What I am saying is make sure that there is some sort of natural ingredient and then you can focus on the with natural extract type claim. But don't suggest the product's natural if it isn't. Be careful of that one too. That would also be considered misleading. Another thing your product should do is smell great. Now, if you don't wanna use fragrances or essential oils, that's okay. Make sure it still smells okay. Make sure it doesn't have any underlying odors that may not be acceptable to a consumer. Because one of the first things a consumer does when they're interested in a product is take the cap off and smell it. So you need to make sure the product smells great 
even if you intentionally do not want it to have any sort of aroma. Of course, if you're gonna use essential oils or fragrances, make sure the product smells great for your target market because that is one of the first things they'll do when they actually get to touch and feel your product. They'll actually smell it first. So the second thing you need to make sure it does is feel great because that's the second thing a consumer does. Now, even if it's a product that is meant to be applied over 28 days to get its full benefits, they still have to enjoy the sensory aspects of the product every time they use it. You can incorporate some wow factors from some sensory enhancements. You can just make sure it feels like a beautiful, rich, soothing cream. It's up to you and what the product is, of course, but just make sure that the sensory profile is appealing to your consumer because the first two things they'll do is smell it and then feel it. So make sure that you get ticks in the boxes for both of these items. Finally, make sure that one of your must-haves in your formula is its suitability for sensitive skin. Around half of the consumers out there believe or have self-diagnosed themselves as having sensitive skin, which means your product is instantly going to appeal to about half of the possible consumers if you have a sensitive skin type message. Of course, make sure you use some ingredients that actually back up that claim and you hold evidence to support it. But it's a great addition into your product. I'd put it on my must-have list with every new development. So now, you can't say free from what's some great ideas for you to move forward with. Well, instead of a no list, have a yes list. In fact, the first few brands that come out and focus on a yes list instead of a no list will have their point of difference straight away. Other brands will then follow suit. So you need more than just that. I wanna point out another example of a hugely successful concept and that is BB creams. So when BB creams came out, they hit the market and they just took off by storm. Then we saw CC creams, then we saw DD creams, and the list goes on. So you need to know when to stop as well. But what you could do is look at what's been a popular concept and tag onto that. Another example is where products have five benefits in one, and that can be part of your major marketing campaign or even the product name got some examples of five-in-one stories for you. Now this can instantly grab a consumer's attention. Remember any claims you make do need to be supported by evidence for the claims you make and the inputs and materials that you use, but it's a great concept to tell a very easy message to your consumer. Of course, we've also seen Olay's Seven Effects product. Again, it's based on having these benefits in the product, whether it be five, whether it be seven. Don't go much higher than that, otherwise your message does get confused and the product to deliver all those benefits could become prohibitively expensive. And remember to hold evidence for all of the claims you make. Another example is let's look at the product itself. Consumers will perceive a product with some sort of visual effect as having better performance properties. If they can see something, they'll believe it will do something more than a clear product could. So take a look at maybe adding some encapsulates, adding some color, and on color, have a look at what your consumer's doing. If they have a white product, make yours pearlescent. If they have a pearlescent product, make yours silver. If they have a silver product, make yours gold. If they talk about added extracts, they don't name an amount, you can add the extract and you can name the amount. So they could have a conditioner with argan oil, I could have a conditioner with 3% argan oil. Point out some of the benefits. Again, you need to be careful of how high you go because it could be a stability or other performance issue to go too far. But if you've added the material and it really is providing a benefit to the product, then let your consumer know how much you've used of that particular ingredient. They'll be impressed by what you've included rather than what you've not included for a change. Another thing you need to look at doing is including a unique hero ingredient. Now this is a really interesting point because to be competitive with other brands out there, you may find there's a few ingredients your product has to have. 
It may need to include vitamin A, for example. But don't let that be your only hero ingredient, otherwise you've done nothing different. So you might need to include some hero ingredients that a lot of your competitors have in the product and that's simply so your product can be considered to be as effective as what else is out there. But make sure your products have a unique hero ingredient that suits your company philosophy and helps set you apart. Another thing you really need to do to have a brand leading concept is test the concept with a consumer group. You might be aware what your hero ingredient is, you might be aware what your point of difference is, but have you conveyed that effectively to your target market? You might be surprised when you're in the midst of development, you're close to the product, you're passionate about the product and its story, but you may not have communicated that effectively enough to the average consumer. It's a good idea to test out your marketing and your concept on members of your target market to see if your point of difference really is enough for them to change their purchasing behavior or have you not conveyed the message well enough or explained it well enough in your marketing. It's so important that you run a small consumer test group like this to make sure that you've got a point of difference that stands out, not just to you because you're passionate about the product, but to the consumers you want to attract and get passionate about your product too. Finally, and if you haven't already got the point of this video, it is focus on the benefits. You can't be talking about what the product doesn't contain anymore, so focus on what it does contain. And if it doesn't have a strong enough story on its own, then work to improve that story using some of the ideas I've talked about in this video or some of your own ideas. Because remember, ultimately it's your brand and your product. So make it your own, make it unique, and make sure you've got evidence to support every claim you make and keep it positive about the benefits of the product. I created this video to help brands find a strong point of difference that will help emphasize the unique points of difference and benefits of their product now that these EU technical guidelines prohibit free from claims anymore. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up, leave any questions or comments below and let me know what other topics you might want me to cover. And remember to subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating.